So in the previous video, I introduced uh, conductance-based neuron models, which can be represented by a, an electrical circuit that looks somewhat like this. In this case, it's a conductance-based model with a active sodium current and an active potassium current. And this is called the uh, Hodgkin-Huxley model, um, the squid giant axon. And more generally, um, in this video, I want to talk not just about this model, but how, um, how you can model these voltage-dependent conductances, which are sort of just added on top of the passive components um, of the membrane that we've already talked about. So, specifically, we want to talk about how to introduce uh, voltage dependence into uh, these active uh, conductances, such as sodium and potassium conductance, uh, voltage dependence. And this voltage dependence is very important and essential to have uh, underlying dynamics, such as, uh, you know, an action potential. In order to have an action potential in a neuron, you need to have uh, conductances that are voltage dependent. A passive membrane is only going to approach exponentially some steady state value. In order to perform any sort of computations, you need to have these voltage dependent uh, nonlinearities introduced into the system. Otherwise, neurons really wouldn't be able to do anything all that interesting. So, conductance based neuron models are typically uh, modeled with Hodgkin Huxley uh, channel models. And this introduces the voltage dependence I was just talking about. Uh, this, um, these two uh, researchers uh, sort of pioneered um, conductance-based modeling uh, in the 1950s and received a Nobel Prize uh, for their work in the 1960s. Um, and these, they're basically two, two names that come up quite a lot. Um, this is uh, Alan uh, Hodgkin here, and this is Andrew Huxley here. So I just wanted to throw their pictures up because they are actually you know, very central figures, and you should know their names if you're interested in computational neuroscience. Um, and just a quick fun fact, uh, Andrew Huxley's uh, grandfather, uh, Thomas uh, Huxley, was uh, no, he, he was one of the early uh, proponents of Darwinian evolution, and uh, known as Darwin's bulldog, actually. So he's actually very famous as well. And the Huxley family in general actually has uh, quite a few um, well-known scientists uh, in their history. So um, just a fun fact for you there. So in the previous video, I already introduced how the individual ionic currents, uh, so in this case, uh, a sodium current, just as an example, I introduced this general formula for calculating the amount of current, and it's based on Ohm's law. Uh, specifically, you have the conductance of the current here, and this is um, sort of equal to 1 over the resistance of the uh, sodium channels, but we like to think about it in terms of conductance because that's just simpler. And then this here is uh, what's known as the driving force. It's just the difference between the uh, membrane potential and the equilibrium potential for sodium. Uh, and, you know, if you're thinking about Ohm's law, the V equals IR, this corresponds to the V term, and it's the drop uh, in voltage across the uh, resistor in that electrical circuit I was talking about. Okay, so, so this is how um, we're going to model these currents. And where are we going to introduce the voltage dependence? Well, ENA, it turns out, is a constant. So this doesn't have any sort of dynamics at all. It's constant because uh, it's determined by the balance of sodium ions within or inside versus outside of the cell membrane. And that balance is pretty well maintained by the sodium-potassium pump. And not a whole lot of sodium actually ends up um, ends up flowing through uh, open ion channels. Um, so, so this turns out to be a constant. Um, obviously, V is the voltage, so um, so that can't, you know, we, we can't do anything there. So the, the voltage-dependent um, component of this uh, current is uh, comes in this term here. So the, um, if the, we know for the uh, sodium channel that a depolarizing current, for example, will increase the conductance by opening uh, more channels. So this uh, component of the equation here is voltage dependent, and it turns out that uh, it's also uh, time dependent because um, a sodium channel can't open instantaneously or it can't close instantaneously. So you are going to have uh, some sort of um, chemical reaction that uh, des describes the uh, that describes the transition between the open and closed state, and that's a little bit of a preview um, for how we're going to. Uh, model this because it's one of the first things that we actually talked about um, in one of the first videos I made was talking about proteins that make transitions between multiple states. So this here is how uh, Hodgkin and Huxley uh, proposed to model um, or their proposal for how to model the sodium conductance of uh, the membrane at any given time. So they introduced this parameter here which is called the maximal conductance. So the maximal uh, conductance describes, it, it's sort of like the total number of sodium channels uh, within the cell. Um, more strictly, it's equal to um, the number of channels, um, which we can call n, times uh, the single 
the amount of conductance um, through a single uh, channel. Uh, so something like this maybe. So you can think of this as if each channel contributes some component of uh, the total conductance and then n is the total number of uh, channels. That's, ex that's uh, strictly what this, uh, what this parameter means. Um, so what it precisely means is if all of the sodium channels were open, this would be the value um, for the total conductance of the membrane uh, to sodium. So this is the highest amount of conductance that you can have. Or conversely, because conductance is the reciprocal of resistance, it's the lowest uh, amount of resistance that you could have. You can sort of think about it that way, because um, G equals 1 over R, if you remember that from um, previous... And you can see, by the way, that the maximal conductance, or just the sodium conductance uh, in general, is uh, positively related to the total amount of sodium current. So the higher conductance you have, or the lower resistance you have, the more current you have flowing. So that makes sense with our intuition. And then Hodgkin and Huxley introduced these two uh, variables here, which are called uh, gating variables. And the gating variables are on the uh, interval of 0 to 1, so I'll just say, for example, m is in between 0 and 1, h is also between uh, 0 and 1. Um, and you can think about this as m being the proportion of sodium channels in which the activation gate is open, and h is the proportion of sodium channels in which the inactivation gate is open. So if you've uh, taken some biology or physiology, you might remember that sodium channels have two gates, uh, both of which are voltage dependent. Um, one is an activation gate and one is an inactivation gate. Other channels are most, more simple, and they'll just have one of these gates, um, but I decided to pick the sodium just because it's the more complicated case, and we can talk about that here, and then when you see the simpler case, it'll be easy. Um, so, explicitly, what um, Hodgkin and Huxley made the assumption that the M and the H uh, gating variables are sort of independent. So, whether the activation gate is open um, is an independent event from whether the inactivation gate is open. And both gates need to be open uh, for current to flow through that uh, particular ion channel. So, for example, if M equals 1 and H equals 1, then all of the sodium channels are open, because M, M times H would be 1, and you get your maximal conductance back. And therefore, the maximal amount of sodium current um, for any given, any particular uh, membrane potential would be flowing through uh, those ion channels. Now, let's say M equals 0 and H equals 1. How much sodium current would you get? Well, M equals or n equals 0, so 0 times 1 times maximum conductance is 0, so, and 0 times the driving force is 0, so there's, there would be no uh, sodium current if n equals 0. Similarly, if h equals 0, all the channels are closed. Uh, there is no sodium current. If m equals 0.5 and h equals 0.5, then uh, 0.5 times 0.5 is uh, 0.25, so a quarter of the sodium channels are open and passing current, you can think about it that way, and therefore you will get 25% um, of your maximal conductance. So the next question is, how do we model these uh, uh, gating variables, these M and H uh, gating variables? And it turns out that you, Hodgkin Huxley modeled um, these very similarly to how we were talking about uh, proteins and modeling uh, a protein being in two different states, an activated and inactivated state. Um, so th I talked about um, these, sort of, these sort of first order kinetics um, or switching between multiple states and proteins in earlier videos, and um, I suggest that you take a look at those videos because if you understand those, this, this will be a complete breeze to you. Um, and H is uh, modeled in essentially the same way. So in a previous uh, video, I actually showed how you can uh, derive the differential equation for this, and I'll, I'll write that in a second. What I'll uh, just remind you of is that alpha is sort of the rate at which this um, variable is activated. So M is the amount of uh, gates that are open. Alpha is the rate at which the activation gate uh, will be opening. And uh, beta would be the uh, active, or inactivation, or not, sorry, not the inactivation rate, the uh, rate at which the activation gate is closing. And these are uh, voltage-dependent uh, rates. So I'll just put in... So this is where the voltage dependence uh, comes in. And in the next video, I'll, I'll go into specifically what these functions uh, look like, but just know that they're functions of the current membrane potential. And then the last thing uh, I want to say is that I've already, um, I've already derived exactly how um, those kinetic equations uh, map into a differential equation. And that differential equation looks like this, and it's, again, the same formalism as uh, we had for the uh, membrane equation when we were numerically solving uh, for the memory potential of a neuron. So you can solve this uh, system in the same exact numerical procedure. And uh, the only difference is that the time constant um, 
is not resistance times capacitance. I mean, that would sort of be ridiculous. Uh, instead, the time constant is 1 over alpha plus beta, and uh, the steady state is uh, alpha over alpha plus beta. And these are the rates that determine the switching between the active and inactive states. And I derived um, all of this uh, stuff in a previous previous video. Um, so if you don't remember that, um, you can go back and sort of revisit that old video. And in the next video, I'll talk a little bit more about what the alpha and beta functions and how they are determined and what this means for the overall model.